come to the next lecture ok. So, we looked at uh, the different types of markets in the first lecture. So, you have the human need market then or the relaxation market, then the product type market, then the demographic market, then the geographic market. Now, how can we with all this explain or give a formal definition for marketing? The marketing, when we are looking at a formal definition of marketing, we are adding to the usual marketing the management aspect also. So, we are looking at marketing management as the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion and distribution of ideas, goods and services to create exchange that satisfy individual and organizational objectives. Look at uh, this terminologies which are used here. So, I just explained to you how management has got included in the definition of marketing. Look at it, it is the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion and distribution of ideas, goods and services to create exchange that satisfy individual and organizational objectives. Now, look at what is conception. You may look at an example, a mundane example could be where a few decades back it may be there even now also. You may find your neighbor in a terrific rush in the morning times. He may be wanting to catch the bus which takes him to the workplace. That bus might be coming to the bus stop around 7 o'clock. So, he might like to leave his house around 6 45 to be in time for the work uh, for this bus stop to reach the bus stop before the bus comes. Now, when you look at this person's schedule, he would have got up early in the morning maybe around 5 o'clock and goes through his daily course. And the last portion of that daily core might be that he might like to have a small break first before he packs off with his perhaps lunch or goes to the bus stop. Now, this last portion is something which he normally if you look at the individual schedule normally you find that this is the portion which he cuts into from the time aspect. He does not get the time to go through his breakfast in a leisurely manner. Now, he may be your neighbor, but he does not want to talk to you. He is in a rush to reach the bus stop. The people who have done the breakfast for him, maybe it is his wife or mother, they have also gotten up perhaps even earlier than him, readied the breakfast. They may find that after readying the breakfast, taking all the trouble, this individual is not having time to have the breakfast and leave for the bus. So, if you are observing all this, some things might strike you. Oh, this individual normally cuts into this breakfast time. The last 10 minutes he wants to have the breakfast, 
but he does not have the time, he does not get the 10 minutes. So, what he may do is he may skip the break first instead of that you may think suppose I come with a product which can satisfy his breakfast needs that is it can be in a liquid form or it can be from a tablet form or some other form where he can take his breakfast even standing at the gate. So, if you are able to give him that breakfast in this type of capsule form or a drink form where he does not require that 10 minutes, he can finish that breakfast within some few minutes that is one or two minutes and he is off to his bus stop. So, this could give you an idea of a product. Can a product be manufactured which can take care of the needs of this individual during this rush hours in the morning and still have all the effect of having a breakfast for him that is he does not think that he is starving while going to the breakfast. You may think that this type of product may be a good seller for this type of markets that is the individual who is in a rush in the morning place wants to have a quick breakfast and leave. So, you may come up with a drink which can satisfy his needs that is a breakfast needs. It can be a low calorie or a high calorie, high protein or a low protein whichever might be the type of thing. This drink can be good for the what do you call the person who is going it can be good for his children also it can be good for his parents also when they are retiring for the day. This is called conceptualizing an idea. There was an idea and you conceptualized this idea if you are able to convert this idea into a product what you have done is you have really created a product from this conception of the idea. So, this is where you come to so many of the products which are coming in the present day market and each, each product which is being exhibited in the marketplace you will many times appreciate the lot of conceptualization which has go gone in before it comes out with the product. After this it can be when you are through with this product the idea of pricing this product how much should it be priced. If a product already is there to satisfy this type of needs in the market and how is it actually priced then how this new product should be promoted in the marketplace. And after promoting this product, how should you look at the distribution of this product? So, it can be an idea, it can be a good or it can be a service and all these are what is the end objective? You are looking at the end objective of satisfying the individual through satisfaction of the individual you are also achieving the organizational objectives that is you wanted to market this product and marketing of this product by satisfying the individual that is his needs is what you are looking at in marketing management. It is the formal process of marketing management where you look at planning, executing the conception, pricing promotion and distribution of ideas, goods and services to create exchange that satisfy individual and organizational objectives.
came. Now, the next question is in an organization at what level are you going to have marketing? If you look at any organization, an organization can have marketing management at any level be it personnel, be it marketing, be it finance. What is the whole underlying objective here? The underlying objective of this statement is that marketing need not actually occur only in the marketing department of an organization. When you are recruiting personnel also, you are doing marketing. When you are looking at finance decisions also, you are looking at marketing. So, you want to buy a product at a lower price, how do you convince the supplier to offer you the discounts? So, formal marketing if you look at in an organization, it is done by sales managers, salesmen, advertising managers, marketing research managers or customer service managers or product managers or it can be your marketing vice president. Now, having looked at the formal definition of marketing, let us now look at some concepts which are there in the in marketing management. The first concept that you have to look at when you are looking at marketing is what is called the product concept. What is this product concept? The product concept states that consumers will respond favorably to good products that are reasonably priced and little marketing effort is required to achieve satisfactory sales and profits. What does that mean? It means that you are having a good product. When you are having a good product, the organization or the producer of the product thinks that marketing is not required. In that sense, to sell this product, it will sell on its own, that is a product concept. So, because the consumer knows about your product. And when the consumer knows about your product and he knows that it is a good product, he will respond favorably to it. Contrast this with the production concept. What is a production concept? You produce a mass of this particular product, that is a large number of this product, that is you are producing in bulk volume. When you are producing in bulk volume, what is likely to happen? The result is the cost per unit of this product is likely to come down. So, there is a product concept where the organization thinks that the consumers will respond favorably to good products that are reasonably priced and little marketing effort is required to achieve satisfactory sales and profits. In contrast to this, the production concept looks at bulk volume and lower cost. You produce in a mass cycle, the cost will come down, when it costs will come down, so the it is likely to attract the customer. This is what the organization might think. Okay. Compared to that, what is the selling concept? The selling concept says that consumers will normally not buy enough of companies' products unless they are approached with a substantial selling and promotion effort. So, this can be appreciated by taking a few examples. It is especially true for many unsought goods, that is the consumer does not require this good in the 
real sense. It can be in the present day circumstance. Look at the encyclopedias, the how many of the individuals go through an encyclopedia. Suppose you are given the unenviable task of selling these encyclopedias, it is quite a hard task. So, nobody wants to buy these encyclopedias and they are priced fairly high. So, what could be your potential market place for these encyclopedias? It can be the libraries of well known institutions and there also when you approach these well known institutions to stock your encyclopedia, again you have to sell this encyclopedia. There may be one another person who is selling the same encyclopedias in a different form. So, even this unsought goods you have to do a lot of selling before your product moves. The very good example for this is your uh, the other example for this is your selling of this life insurance policy. So, you find many of these life insurance policy agents finding it very hard to sell their insurance policies to customers. So, they have to keep on telling this prospective customer that look you may be healthy now you have got a family to support, suppose something goes wrong then what will you do? Make an insurance policy for that during that time when your family requires it so badly this insurance policy is going to come handy and useful for which the consumer or the prospective consumer may say this insurance policy is giving me very low returns, why should I make this insurance policy? If I go in for different options which is available in the marketplace, I will get better returns for which the insurance agent should have a satisfactory answer which can convince this individual. Now, take the example of the American automobile industry. So, you can walk into an automobile showroom, you can pick a car of your choice, you can walk out with a car. The car is yours and the sale is done very fast. Now, in order to make this sale, you go to a, a well known company showroom in any of the cities in the United States, you find there is no one in that showroom. You are entering that showroom, it looks as though you are the only person in that showroom with so many cars around. So, you see the different cars which are exhibited and when you see the different cars one product or one exhibited product model one exhibited product model might catch your attention. You may try to spend a few more minutes looking at this model saying what does this model have to offer me, what are the types of features which it is going to offer. So, you, you spend 3 to 4 minutes looking at this car saying what a beautiful car. So, when you are spending this time you find that one person is approaching you. From where he approaches you, you are yourself not sure, hey where did this person come, but the person has come and is standing by your side. He tells you sir this car can accelerate from 0 to 100 within a few seconds and it can provide you all these types of facilities. 
it can zoom, it has so many gears, it can, it can, it has an auto function, it has this, that, all those types of things. When it gives you this type of product features, you may be taken in by this seller that is who is selling this product for you and then you may just wonder the last thing that you may normally do is look at the price tag for all these features what is the price that price may look a little beyond your reach but this seller is well prepared for this situation he may ask you sir can you give your credit card we will tell you what could be the best emi options available for you so in a different uh, in a typical market situation in the united states that credit card gives the seller what are all the what is the salary packet of the individual what are all the types of emi options which he has already exercised and what could be a reasonable emi option for this particular product so you may find that this person the seller is coming out with an emi option saying sir you can afford to give this much of emi for this particular car so you are almost psyched out by this individual and you wanted this car and this seller has given you all these types of options which is more or less making you to go in for the car and you will find that okay this deal is done i am walking away with the car so with all that you can choose your name plate also in the car so this is not just giving the numbers registration numbers but it can give additional features also this is normally referred to in the american parlance that is the automobile industry parlance as psyche him out so but this is not the method of marketing that you should be really doing the aim of marketing is not selling so if you look at what drucker says drucker says that the marketing's aim should be to make selling superfluous that is effective selling should be preceded by needs assessment market research product development pricing and distribution in other words you should not be selling a product just because you have manufactured it even though it does not satisfy the needs of the consumer so you should assess his needs first how do you assess his needs in other words you assess his needs through a sustained or systematic market research process so this is the importance of having market research in the present day markets before you come out with a product you go into market research find out whether this product is required for the individual when you are able to come to a conclusion that this product is required for the individual then you can go through your market research study then you can go in for your product development and it is likely that this product may be able to sell or capture the market in a good measure so this is what is called effective selling the psyche him out type of thing which i just mentioned that is the american automobile industries many times this psyche him out is referred to in the present day circumstance as aggressive selling this aggressive selling carries high risks you should not go in for aggressive selling because suppose you mention so many features in the product suppose there are 10 features which you have mentioned 
Suppose it is one or two which is not there in the product, then the consumer might excuse you in inverted commas may think say okay, just one or two features he has added, okay, the remaining eight are there, I am reasonably happy. Suppose you gave him 10 features and the consumer finds that it is only 4 or 5 which are there in the product. So, 5 are not there in the product, then it will have a deleterious effect on your selling process. It will not be effective selling. In other words, what you are looking at as aggressive selling may actually backfire. It may backfire through this word of mouth marketing, the consumer might tell others the prospective buyers that 10 features were offered to me, only 4 or 5 are there, you better be careful when going in for this product. So, this marketing concept becomes very essential where you are giving more or less a true picture of what the product is capable of offering to the individual. So, the formal definition of the marketing concept which we look at is where you can say it is key to achieving organizational goals. It consists in determining the needs and wants of targeted markets and delivering the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than competitors. Kindly note that there may be lot of competitors for your product. They may also be satisfying the needs of the same market segment only. Suppose your product is offered in the same market segment, it has to offer something extra than what is already on offer. Selling focuses on the needs of the seller, marketing on the buyer's needs. Kindly note this, selling always on the needs of the seller, that is he wants his product to be pushed at any cost, but whereas marketing looks at the buyer's needs, it is preoccupied with the need to convert product into cash. Marketing at satisfying consumers needs by means of product and the whole cluster of things associated with creating, delivering and finally, consuming it. This is a statement which is attributed to Levitt and this is given to you in a wonderful manner in his article called Marketing Myopia, which he gave in the year 1960. This was published by Harvard Business Review in the year 1960 and this is considered to be a classic article even to this day. Okay. This statement is attributed to him. So, you look at the selling concept, you are looking at products, selling and promotion, you make profits through sales volume, you look at the marketing concept, what are you looking at marketing? You are looking at customer needs, you are looking at integrated marketing, you are looking at profits through customer satisfaction. So, you are looking at profits through customer satisfaction, which is always very desirable. I have given a few examples here. One of the examples is that of the Maruti car in the Indian market. When it was introduced in the 80s, what was the type of marketing focus the Maruti car had? The marketing focus which the marketing Maruti had was the middle class customer orientation. So, in the 80s what is the type of Indian market which was there? 
if you had a car then you are you are from the upper class of society or the upper economic strata of society as a middle class individual individual you could never have a car or you could never buy a car so the maruti car when it came out into the market it wanted to offer to the individual the indian the indian consumer a compact car at an affordable price a compact car at an affordable price with an indian tag the indian tag was it was called maruti car and the maruti 800 which came in the 80s it was priced at about 54000 rupees so and it was looking sleek with good painting and all those types of things naturally the middle class indian he was attracted to the maruti car but he was also concerned during that time when he looked at the ambassador car or the premier padmini that is a fiat car he used to think that this fiat and the ambassador they are more rugged or compared to the maruti that is the safety aspect of this in the maruti whether it is being compromised this was one of the questions which was coming to his mind right in the 80s only and which was more or less proved by many of the types of um, accidents which occurred where this maruti car could not sustain those accidents so if you hit an ambassador car there used to be a small this thing suppose if even if a darward bison were to hit a ambassador car it is not the ambassador car which would be hurt it would be the bison which will be hurt your car will be standing still in the road but the bison will be moving the other way this is how they used to look at the ambassador car now suppose you are many times this is uh, this is maruti cars i have taken one more example this example is from the telephone industry what is the type of phones which we had in the 80s we had a mechanical phone coming out from the indian telephone industries incidentally indian telephone industries is the first public sector to be started in the independent indian uh, sovereign indian state so in the 1948 what was the objective of this iti it was to fulfill the telecommunication needs of the country it came out with a mechanical phone and this mechanical phone was uh, weighing about 10 kg okay in other words it's a heavy phone and you have to ring this uh, different numbers mechanically 1 2 3 4 like that so many times you used to wonder why this phone is so heavy second can we not come out with a phone which is slim where it can be a push button type where you can uh, get these types of uh, all the features of a phone but not having to go through all this mechanical circus and the weight of the phone will also be substantially reduced the result of that was in 1988 or 87 the same indian telephone industry came out with an electronic phone which was a slim line phone that slim line phone was particularly attractive because it was very cute it had all the push button types of features which are were available so the consumer said ah oh, what a phone to have from iti so in other words the market was very happy with this but when it came to the pricing of this particular product they found that this product is priced very high 
then there was this grey market which was available in a place like Bangalore only in the 80s and when they went to this grey market that is this is not an authentic market. What do you mean by not an authentic market? He is not going to give guarantee for the product or whatever which ITI used to say this is a product which is guaranteed. But this grey market the same product was available in the grey market at a much lesser price. The result of that was the slim line phone which came out from ITI could not really penetrate the market and had it in a way it was a failure be on the price front. Okay, this is what characterized the market. So, what we have done in this whole lecture is we have looked at the different concepts we have looked at why the marketing concept is more important and before we end this lecture we will look at what does the marketing concept call for it it calls for what is called the coordinated marketing what is this coordinated marketing that is you have to do internal marketing as well as external marketing so, the internal marketing is among the different functions within the organization. It can be sales force, advertising, marketing research or with other departments. They must really get enthused to sell the product by the organization. Suppose, you are not able to convince your own people about the product you are manufacturing, then it is a different scenario altogether. So, this internal marketing is required it can be with respect to hiring, training and motivating the employees to, to serving the customers well. So, when you look at an organization a marketing organization you should look at the marketing organization like an inverted pyramid. What is this inverted pyramid? It is if you see the company organization chart from a marketing this inverted pyramid has customers at the top. Then the next one is what is called the front line people may be your general managers or whatever. Then the middle management may be your managers and below then the front line people can uh, the you are all your supervisors or whatever it is the middle management can be your managers the top management can be your general managers or the deputy general managers and above or whatever it is. So, these are the people. So, in other words the top management it says should be in contact with your customers. So, it is not just customers in contact with the front line people. It is also the top management of the organization which should always be in cost constant touch with your customer. Suppose, this is what you are seeing in the present Indian market take a mutual funds market there are many mutual fund players. So, in the market and they address you from the top management he can be the chief general manager of that particular mutual fund. He wants to give the features of that fund and say these are the features which this fund is offering kindly go in for this fund. So, in other words you are seeing a different situation altogether in the Indian market where you look at the top management in contact with the prospective customers it can be through different channels whether it is visual media or print media or directly addressing letters to the prospective customers. So, this is where you look at a correct view of the company organization chart from the marketing perspective. So, this is what we look at. So, these four things that is the market focus customer orientation, coordinated marketing and profitability they form what is called the four pillars of the marketing concept.
So, the market focus, customer orientation, coordinated marketing and profitability form what is called the four pillars of the marketing concept. We will stop here, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.